Where? Why? The bat went into the bottle. How now, brown cow? 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 Now, brown cow? You know where that's from? Yeah. What? Anchorman. Oh, wow, you knew it? How'd you know that? Because I'm a pop culture genius. That's amazing. I would have bet my life that you didn't know that. That would have been a bad bet. Yeah, I'm too frivolous with my life. <laughs> um, can you put it on the beach, boys? I need something to, I need, like, tropical. I need something to pump me up this morning. I don't want to hit some high notes. Test. What are you doing? Why are you opening the sunroof? What are you doing? Close it. I just wanted to see if it was closed. Why would you do that? You wanted to see if it was closed, so you opened it? Yeah. Like, Why don't you just press the close listen, button? it sounds like something's open. Nothing's open. It's called the wind. Wow, you're insane. I'm talking about good vibrations. Good vibrations. My, my low notes are better than your low notes. I got the words wrong. I'm talking about good vibrations. Can you go about like me? No, that's your, that's your range. I got good, my good, my good vibrations. You, you gotta like turn it off so we can hear it. No. No. I'm going, just... Just put being annoying. Kokomo. I don't know how to find Kokomo. I don't even know if it's beach boy. If we can be together. I'm trying to find it. It's not easy. They have 3,000 albums. Just search for Kokomo. I don't think it's called Kokomo. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Kokomo? Yeah. It's not called Kokomo. <laughs> it's not Kokomo. It's Kokomo. How do you spell it? It's like the drink. How do you spell it? Kokomo. No, <laughs> that's not how you spell it. Are you doing it with a K? No, I'm doing with C's. It's, it's K. No, it's not. Kokomo. You have no idea. Aruba, Jamaica. Tip it that. I got it. What was it called? Oh, it's Kokomo, Kokomo with, with a K. K. <laughs> Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I want to take you to Bermuda. Bahama, come on, pretty mama. I gave it about No, no, no. Oh, we could be heroes. Oh, thank you. One day. I don't think that's it. We should go see him live. He'd he died. What? That's really bothering me. Can you, can you reach your hand up there and scrape no, it off? No, I'm not doing it right now. I'll give you a glove. No. Just let me know if we're going under a low at overpass. I don't get my hand <laughs> chopped off. Alright, stop it. Uh, give me a little bit more. Alright. Don't put him in the car! <laughs> Push it I out. can't control it! Push it away! I can't be throwing ice off the car! <laughs> ah! Okay, okay, be done, be done. I'm closing. Ah! It's cold! SLJ. Success, press one. SLJ. Hello! Hello! Sorry to make you wait, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I, di I didn't mean for it to happen. I know. You couldn't say Mr. Jackson without going on for real. Wow. We've got a celebrity on today of sorts. Big time. Startup L. Jackson. Who's not dead? Well, yeah. You, you ruined my first question. Way to go. Dude. What was your first question? Have the tales of your death been greatly exaggerated? Oh, the not... answer is yes. Obviously, no. Well, maybe well, the tales no, of death were not greatly Theoretically, exaggerated. the person behind the account could be alive, but Startup L. Jackson could die. So is Startup L. Jackson dead? You know, it's, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. I got like, I've gotten like, I don't know, four, five, six, uh, you know, notes from people in the last week, like asking about, really more asking about my PR strategy and if that's okay, then whether I'm okay, which is like the most Silicon Valley thing, you know, it's like, oh man, are you, are you out in front of this? Are you ready to go public? Do you need any help? You know, it's like, no, I'm good, man. I'm like, I'm just, <laughs> you know, I'm taking a little time. I'm spending some more time with the fam, reading some books. It's crazy over here. You know? We're really excited to have you on. Can you give us like a quick 30 second synopsis of how this all got started? Yeah. So, I mean, effectively it was uh, like a lot of side projects, little stupid things, right? Um, a friend of mine, we're sitting around and we're like, man, wouldn't it be funny if, uh, you know, Samuel Jackson were tweeting about this tech stuff, right? And so... This friend and I made this account. Um, he, at the time, was real busy, um, you know, building his company, and so we kind of started it together. And he kind of dropped off early, um, and you know, it just became sort of engaging to me. So uh, I kept going with it. It was an inside joke amongst our friends for a while, and at some point, it got a little bit bigger than that. And at some point, it got a little bit crazy. So um, that's the short of it. What? 
what do you think you can do as Startup L. Jackson that you can't do as yourself? You know, I'll, I'll tell you one thing that I think people misunderstand is that somehow, like, you know, I don't say crazy shit in person, you know, the, the, the funny thing to me is that like my, my friends who kind of see it online and then know me are like, man, you say way crazier in person, right? Or even on stage at a conference or something, right? So one thing I don't think matters is, um, you know, being able to say things that are true. You know, I can say things that are true on my own. I can do it with this account. I think what's really interesting to me, the thing that I kind of, you know, uh, meditate on is I think when you look at Silicon Valley and tech more broadly, you know, people talk about social proof and, you know, what have you done and who are you, where did you go to school, what was the startup that you came out of, um, and they really look at ideas through this lens of who's speaking them, um, and I just, I just think that's crazy. So to me, what's um, really interesting about it is just being able to say something and you have no choice other than to engage with this idea for what it is. Um, because what are you going to do? You're like, all right, so some cartoon is saying this. I don't know what his startup is. I don't know, you know, where he went to school. I don't know who he knows, you know? So I, I, I think the ideas and just putting out those ideas on their own to me is what I can do that maybe you don't get to do or, you know, uh, someone who works at the New York Times, they, they don't get to do because they say, oh, you work for a liberal publication. Those are liberal ideas. Like, well, no, they're just ideas. Um, you know, they're either good or they're bad. Um, so that's, that's to me what's entertaining and interesting and engaging. And that's, that's uh, a big part of what keeps me doing that versus um, maybe trying to go out there and put those ideas out on Twitter on my own, where you say something about 140 characters and, you know, it can't necessarily be a nuanced thought because so somebody's just going to attack you for who you are. Yeah. And so is, is there any fear that if you're, for lack of a better term, outed or, or the general public finds out who you are, that that filter will be, that social lens will be applied after the fact and kind of the body of work, so to speak, of, of yourself as Startup L. Jackson will be, you know, discolored or, or viewed in a different lens one way or another? I don't think so. When I look at it, I'm like, look, I think these are good ideas. These are things that I believe. Um, you know, I think people told me they like these ideas. And so, you know, if they come back and say, if you come back and say to me, like, man, I thought you were so cool before I knew that you weren't cool. I thought your ideas were cool, but now I know who was saying them. Uh, you know, they're less impressive. I mean, that feels like your problem, not my problem, you know. Has there, like, do you ever engage with your real personality online? All right, this is some real dirt for you guys. First heard, heard here. I do not argue with my real self on the internet. So when, you know, I'm arguing with Hunter Walk or I'm arguing with somebody else and we go, oh, you're just a weirdo arguing with yourself. You know, I'm not those people. You heard it here first. Okay, Got that's it. in a carpool if you see ex first exclusive of anything. That's the best <laughs> you guys. You're breaking, you're breaking news here. So we ask, we ask every person that we chat with on carpool um, one question routinely, which is, if you were, you're behind a curtain and there are three other people on the other side of that curtain and you get to ask those three people one question, after, ask, after answering, you have to marry one of them. After they answer, you have to marry one of them. What's the question you ask? So I'll tell you, I'm gonna give you an awful answer to this question. I don't know, this is a tough question. Uh, I, I, I reject the premise, this is a horrible question. But, uh, I'm gonna say <laughs> I would ask them uh, what they think the secret to a successful marriage is, um, to try to get at an idea of what their philosophy is, what their expectations are, what they're looking for in a marriage. Um, I don't know. That's that's the best I got. It's an awful answer. Put it in the bucket. Of awful answers. Are you hoping? Are you hoping spot? that they say that they they uh, they lie and engage in fake personalities online? <laughs> they catfish people. Uh, <laughs> no, man. You gotta be a weirdo to do something like that. I'll give you another exclusive here uh, for your audience. Um, you would not believe how much Miss Jackson makes fun of me for uh, having a fake Twitter account. Just like her, her favorite line is like, "Are you are you posting more witticisms, honey?" You know, like she's just she just uh, mer mercilessly mocks me, and I, I know it's ridiculous. So uh, it's, it's an ongoing thing for us. So in in your absence has been the rise 
of uh, Startup J Khaled. Um, I don't know if you've seen that, but do you think uh, you're in more of a collaborative mood with him or whoever that person is, or do you want to start a Twitter beef? Uh, I mean, maybe we could start a Twitter beef for fun, but that guy's pretty funny. I mean, I, you know, I don't even know yeah. the, the actual Khalid. Like, I just, like, I, I, you know, I'm not a big Snapchat user. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I've seen a little bit of his stuff, but so I don't, yeah, I, could, I couldn't do that account, you know, uh, but whoever's doing it is pretty funny. I mean, like, it's pretty funny. It's, it's, I, who knows if it has staying power? I think that's the challenge with something like this, you know? There's only so many things you can say they don't want you to do, you know? Uh, it's so many times you can use a key icon, but it's pretty funny for what it is. So I got, I got no beef. You know, we can all be friends. That's disappointing. That's I was hoping for Twitter beef. I was gonna, I think it'd be hilarious if there was a Twitter beef between Startup yeah. Jackson. Maybe we can just, maybe we can start I might one facilitate up. that, yeah. By the way, I heard Startup Khaled said something mean about Mrs. Jackson. Just saying. Yeah, that. When you get him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll, maybe we could just start a beef and like, you know, it'd be good for us both. We'd do like a PR thing, you know, fake beef. You know, I'll Great tell you all the latest story, which I think is good and maybe good for your startup audience. Uh, a buddy of mine, like Dave McClure, um, he's got this he's got this controversial and interesting advice for startups. He's like, you know what you should do is find a competitor and start a beef with them and make it public because the aggregate PR that you can get from that um, is good for everybody. And, you know, you're a startup, you're in a growing market, there's enough room for you to both grow he called it drag racing he doesn't call it beefing he's just like you call them out and they call you out and then in the articles it's like you and them pulling away from the rest of the market i don't, I don't know that i would necessarily do that but um, dave's a smart guy he's a great marketer and you know we'll throw that out there as a tidbit for your startup listeners to think about as they think about their pr strategy start a beef we'll part ways on that thank you again startup l jackson and um just pay attention because regardless of who the person is behind the account, there are some great things that come from it. Yeah, nice little nuggets. Yeah. Ideas.